Warning. The following scene that you're about to see contains ninja action that is uber and awesome above a forest near Tyron. Viewer discretion is strongly not advised. And here we go with the ninja action as we see Ryu Hayabusa drop down to the power line and he's gonna grind with his gauntlets near Tyron. Just look at that! That, that's gotta take balls or guts to, you know, be able to do something like that. And here he lands in a pathway that leads downward toward the city of Tyron. Hey everybody, this is Double RPG and welcome to another episode of Double RPG Let's Play with Ninja Gaiden Sigma on the PS3. In today's episode, we are getting started with Chapter 4 where we have entered the Vigorian city of Tyron. And we will see how far along we get throughout the level, but I'm sure that we're going to view some of the level and we will see Muramasa for the first time. We'll see how far along we go. Anyway, on with the episode that is already in progress. And as you can see right now, we finally made it all the way to Tyron, the capital city of the Vigurian Empire. And um, as we saw from that note that Ayane gave us from her uh, shuriken or pinwheel or whatever... She is advising us to go to Han's Bar, and we will be making our way down towards Tyron, and we will not get to Han's Bar just yet, because, like I said, we're going to be doing some exploring throughout this level, and believe it or not, just like, just like two episodes ago, we will get another uh, weapon in this uh, video, and the weapon we will get is our first bow staff called the Lunar Bow Staff, or just the Lunar Staff in general. That is basically the bow staff that we get in the game. You know, kind of that pot that you saw back there, you know, when we couldn't open the that door? Yeah, that contains the uh, Lunar Rod, or the Lunar Staff, whatever. Yeah, and um, let's go ahead and let's do some exploring around here. There's some more uh, SWAT team members that we have to fight against when we're here in this part of the, uh, of the, uh, town, so, um, and I think we will get a new enemy to fight in this, uh, in this town, if I'm not mistaken. I assume we will in this episode, and, uh, but, uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, we just got a new technique scroll called the guillotine throw. Basically, while you're jumping over your enemy, you, you press both the square and the X button to grab their neck, so that way Ryu can throw them at a great distance. It's a great uh, death technique to kind of like the Izuna drop, so um, when you fight against enemies like this or, you know, against any of the uh, ninja enemies or the lesser fiends, be sure you use that uh, technique to your advantage because it will save you a lot of trouble with the, some of the cheapness that um, the enemies, that most of the enemies in this game have, uh, you know, have in their AI. Let's just say it that way. But if you can, you know, pummel them with good melee attacks from your uh, weapons, then go ahead and do so. Okay, now we can go ahead and move forward here after we defeated that short little uh, barrage of uh, SWAT team members. And, uh, and of course, we got more that are going to give us trouble, so uh, let's just, uh, just show them who's boss with the uh, Dragon's Claw and Tiger's Fang. And they are going to be mincemeat. Hail to the power of Ryu Hayabusa! Ha <laughs> ha! And that door right there, it, it's, it says it's locked because it contains a keyhole with a skull symbol. We will be getting an item that can open that door, but that will be much later, so we'll have to wait and get that. Okay, now we finally got the, the Lunar Bow Staff. And uh, basically, this Bow Staff, um, it will do... Uh, really great, uh, you will do some really awesome, uh, um, uh, combo, combination moves with that, because that, that, that weapon right there, it's probably one of the most, uh, efficient weapons for Ryu to unleash some really cool techniques. This is especially when you, you know, upgrade the bow staff to a higher level, but you will see what I'm talking about once as we get over to Muramasa's shop. But, uh, but when you use a weapon like that, it seems like it's pretty weak. Because it doesn't look all that sharp, sharpened. But we will sharpen it once we get to a new level. And that stone tablet right there, that is a part of the... Um, there's this uh, pedestal or this uh, this little uh, device that, that was in the uh, Twin Serpent Plaza that we just passed by. But 
We cannot use that yet. We will be doing that much, much, much later on. I I can't say exactly when, but probably in chapter 15 or 16. But uh, it will be a while till we make it back to the Twin Serpent Plaza. So, And yes, there are going to be SWAT team members that are going to be giving us trouble by shooting us in multiple directions or multiple uh, balconies that are across from us. So, Now, that item that's on that uh, balcony over there, that will contain a another great item that we can use to our advantage. But uh, let's go ahead and move over here and let's see what we get in this treasure chest that's hiding over here. And that gives us a life of the gods. And, uh... We'll go ahead and we'll just, uh, we'll just, uh, use it on our meter. But, of course, like I said, if you have nine of them, I mean, if you don't have nine of them, just wait until you get nine of them so you can increase your health automatically. But the decision is up to you. Okay, now let's get over here. Now, you want to be standing in a specific spot on this wall so that way you can grab up to the blue pole that's, um, that's above you right here. And once we get over here to this balcony, there is a, an electric wire. Well, it's not electric, but it's a wire that we can hang on to that we can strafe our way to that other balcony where that treasure chest is. So let's go ahead and move over there. And once we're strafing on the uh, on the uh, the wire here, that clock up there that represents the time. You know your real time. You know whatever time it is that is at your you know home. So. That's why it's, uh, you know, the the bells are going off in that clock tower right there because it tells you what time it is. But it could be like uh, 8.30 and 9 o'clock, but who knows. Anyway, that treasure chest that we got back there, that was a Lives of the Thousand Gods. And uh, I don't know why I did not equip it yet, but I assume it's because of these enemies. But but let's go ahead and we are going to be doing some mince meat. Oh, close up. <laughs> but we can jump down safely. And uh, that... I think that right there, that will give us the nunchucks, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, the nunchaku. Yes, this is one of the, uh, the, um, chain-based weapons, you know, kind of like the Vigurian flail, which we will get much later. And, yeah. I wish it would have been awesome if Ryu could dual-wield a couple of, uh, couple of nunchucks so he can imitate Michelangelo from the Ninja Turtles, but that's just me. Hey, I love me some Ninja Turtles, so... <laughs> uh, I really don't know what to say. I, I kind of got lost right there. I don't know what I was going to say. Ah, uh, man. But, yeah, nonetheless, I still love Ninja Turtles. This is one of the reasons why I actually really like playing this game, because it actually reminds me, you know, playing Ninja Turtles, you know, any of the Ninja Turtle games, because they did carry swords and nunchucks and bow staffs but no size really that i'm really surprised we did not i mean there are not any there are no size in this game so okay let's move up to this walkway here where we will see a brand new enemy but we will do that once we get on top of the skyscraper or balcony of this building so let's go ahead and defeat these swap members right here and they will give us more essence which we can always use and always need to uh grow, reuse weapons, and, you know, to buy items. Okay, this is the new enemy that I was referring to that we were going to meet in the city. These are the Black Spider Ninjas from the Black Spider Ninja Clan. And these are probably the toughest enemies in the game because not only do they have really uh, wicked AI, but these guys can throw an uh, incinerary shuriken at you which will stick onto you and they will blow up on Ryu and he will lose some health that way but you can avoid the technique in case if you um, use something like the uh, like the flying swallow technique or something like that but you can you know dodge and uh, uh, deflect that attack the best you can so it's not avoidable avoidable by any means so okay now we open this chest and that will give us a spirit of the devils basically that is the same as the life of the gods basically that will increase your ninpo gauge so uh let's go ahead and, but let's go ahead and use the lives of the thousand gods which we should have done 
about a minute or two ago, so let's go ahead and, and use that, and let's go ahead and use the Spirit of the Devils, which, like I said, will increase our Ninpo gauge to two uh, Ninpo slots that we can use for the uh, Ninpo magic that we have. Okay, so let's go over here to this building. Now, this is where Muramasa lives in the Vigur Empire. He is there to essentially help Ryu strengthen his weapons and to help him uh, defeat the uh, Vigurian Emperor and the fiends that are uh, helping him, kind of like Doku, for instance. And the man who is playing... Um, who is playing Muramasa in this game is Michael Bell. You might remember Michael Bell for playing Raziel in the Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver series and Legacy of Kane Defiance, and he also played the Fear in Metal, Metal Gear Solid 3, so he's probably considered the Shakespearean voice actor of video games. He's really, really good with how he presents his characters, so he's, he's probably up there as one of my... Uh, Probably one of my top five or top ten favorite voiceovers in video games or just about anything. He's he's really he's really well oriented with his vocal skills and he's kind of one of my inspirations, you know, to try to get into voice acting and such. So yeah. But there are some uh, there are some items that we can buy, and we went ahead and we bought the Azuna Drop Technique Scroll. And he will sell us armlets, and basically that armlet is uh, the one that we bought, Armlet of the Sun, that will inc increase our attack strength. So I think we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll equip that right about now, and we went ahead and uh, strengthen up the uh, Lunar Staff, so that way it can be more powerful and we can unleash some very de some really deadly, uh, more deadlier combos with that, so yeah. But we are going to get sidetracked by some SWAT team members that are going to prevent us from moving on further, so. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the SMACKDOWN on them. Yes, the SMACKDOWN. Woohoo! And there are blue ones right there. I, I, I forgot about that. I, I can't remember what... The blue ones do. Oh yeah, now I remember. The blue ones they uh, they have uh, grenade launchers at their side at the beginning, and if you hit them, they will not. If you uh, attack the if you attack the blue SWAT members, they will uh, the uh, grenade launcher will be knocked off their hands, and they will go back to you know resort using uh, the uh, elect electric the plasma like um, baton or tonfa or whatever you want, and the shield. So. Now, we're taking a look at this technique scroll here, and basically that is telling us how to use the Azuna Drop. Basically with the uh, Dragon Sword, the Lunar Rod, and the Dragon's Claw and Tiger's Fang. You can use the Azuna Drop with the other weapons too, so don't let those other three weapons fool you in thinking that they are the only ones you can use, the, uh, use that ability. So, yeah. Okay, let's go over here. And, uh, I think going in here, we will have to fight more of the, uh, Black Spider Ninjas. Oh, yes, I thought so. Cheeky sauerkraut. So. They become, like, a side enemy in this game, but they're more... But they have a more, uh, antagonistic role in, uh, Ninja Gaiden Dragon Sword and Ninja Gaiden 2 or Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2. You know, that released back in 2008 and 2009, so they have a more predominant... That they have a more dominant role in the uh, sequels that are abound, but I'm not sure about what they what their what their purpose is for the upcoming Ninja Gaiden 3 that was just re that was just announced. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm definitely going to be looking forward to playing that game because it definitely has you know caught my interest, and hopefully they will you know maintain the uh, hardcore action that Ninja Gaiden is best known for with the hack and slash genre and uh, see what it has in store and see how it can be beneficial to those who are who haven't played hack and slash games like this as Yosuke Hayashi has said that this game is going to be more accessible than just the hardcore crowd 
And now, right over here, we will see Ayane is telling us about the Black Spider Ninja Clan. But uh, we're going to be fighting them more, but we will have to wait until we make it to the next episode. So, next time on Double RPG Let's Play with Ninja Gaiden Sigma on the PS3. We are going to be moving on further through Chapter 4, and we will make our way over to Han's Bar to conclude the chapter. Anyway, take care of yourselves, gamers, and I'll see you on the next episode. See you guys then.